But the, but the thing is that <laughs> for foreigners, if you go to China, the Chinese people are sort of over uh, warm, over over welcoming, <laughs> welcoming, and uh, and yeah. uh, really hospitable, and then they. You know, you do whatever you like, and the Chinese people are always high. You know, so mm. they, they they expect the same when they go to overseas. Wow. Yes. Another thing is that uh, uh, there is always complaining for buffet places. You know, when they get the Chinese ladies, especially when they go to cruiser, they have a buffet cruises, cruises um, yeah. or or they go to buffet places. Yeah, I wonder here buffets in in Las Vegas because there are so many buffets here. Yeah. But I've only been like once. But so. when they cut Chinese ladies, they take so much on the place and they're never going to finish. They just took so much and the, the, the eating, you know, the, the it's not very nice looking. I know, uh, I know. The table manner. I mean, yeah. the manner is, 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 is look, you know, so, so some Ch- the Japanese, mm. some restaurant just, uh, I don't want your money, just get it away. Yes. Wow. There are quite a few videos like that. The, 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 uh, the Japanese restaurant owner get so angry, say, the way you are eating is so dirty, and just get away from my restaurant, and I don't want you to pay. I don't want your money. Wow. Just leave. So I've seen a couple of videos like that. For this, I have to say both sides, okay? Uh, first of all, I understand my sisters, okay? In the 1960s, we had a starvation. There are over 30,000, how much? 30 million. Million. 30 million people lost their lives of starvation. Of course, yesterday, Swedish people say it's so 45 million or, or some. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. And anyway, 30,000. Yeah. Chinese government is, oh, no, 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 it's 20. Million, million, uh, million. T- uh, uh, the Chinese government says only 22 million. But still, uh, oh my it's, God! It's only twenty-two million, and uh, and uh, the scholar says no, 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 it's thirty million, and some others say only oh, no, thirty-six million, some say oh, thirty-eight million. Anyway, big number of people died, and I still remember I was six years old, and we had no food eat. We had eat the leaves, we had eat the mud, and we had eat the tree bark. skin bark, the, bark, the yeah. tree bark. We could eat anything green, anything can put in our stomach. And we have all the, you know, the face was yellow. And so this is why until today, until today, and I grow fat, I have to uh, mm-hmm. on, <laughs> go it's on diet. Right. Still, right. still, I have the memory of the hunger. I have the memory of hunger. When I see food and see something, I cannot endure to see people leave their food on table yeah. with the food. Yeah. I remember once I was in Thailand with my family and there's a big prom, you know, and uh, people can't finish. And I just could not see those things stay on the table. I just ate them all. And wow. uh, then I got sick next, next morning. I have to pay more to buy medicine for my diarrhea. And I got three days, <laughs> terrible, terrible in my stomach. So, so you have to understand that the Chinese people starved, especially on my age. The people afford to travel today, are most like the 50s, 60s, they have this memory of starvation. So they still, in their mind, they remember this. So they're still hungry. Yeah. Actually, um, uh, scientific, you know, scientifically, what has been shown is that the, well the lack of, I suppose, but the foods that you eat be- before age 10 are the things that later on in life you crave. So I suppose that would work to say that if you were starving up until age 10, then that memory is going to just be stuck with you forever. Absolutely. Because I know for me, yeah, and I, it actually rings true for me. The things that I ate regularly uh, up to age 10, yeah, once in a while, I'm just like, oh, I gotta have that. Good. Yes. So, so in this case, first of all, for the Chinese ladies and my brothers, sisters, if you go to overseas, especially go to Bufi, take more times. It's okay. Take one times, three times, four times, five times, and eat, finish, and go to get more. No one will say nothing. No one will say anything. It's okay. It's normal. Mm-hmm. But don't bring so much on the table you cannot finish. It's not good. And also for the restaurant owner, you might just joke with them a little. 
Okay, you say, if you don't finish your food, you have to pay double. Mm. Okay, then if you don't finish the food on your table, you have to take all the food away and pay extra for that. Oh, wow. That would I mean, <laughs> <laughs> here in Vegas, that just wouldn't be possible because that this is what this town's about. It's one of the things it's really famous for, or it's mm-hmm. all-you-can-eat buffets. Um, but I do understand that because, in addition, I, I was raised with you don't waste food because I don't come from wealthy people. So you, you, it was just like what you're saying for buffets. My mother's uh, attitude towards food was, if you take less and then you finish that and then you want more, fine, take a second. But don't take more than you can eat. So if your eyes are bigger than your stomach, you know, just hold off and then see if you can eat a little bit more. Don't take half of everybody's food onto your plate and then leave I have it there. I have uh, very much experience like this. When I go to a buffet or go to somebody's dinner, I see something look so delicious. So I put so much on my plate. Yeah, he does. Then, then, then what happens is it's not delicious. Then I have to finish this yeah, all he, before I take others. He doesn't try stuff first. So always like the other day, okay, it's fall, as you can see with my lovely decorations in the window. So I couldn't wait till the first day of autumn because I had these decorations to put up. Anyway, um, I went, he had never had pumpkin pie. He had never had sweet potato pie. He had never had pecan pie. And of course with fall in, in America, these are things that I have missed for the last 10 years. Really, really, really missed. So I went and I got, uh, what sweet potato pie Mm -hmm. and some little pecan pies, Mm -hmm. uh, pecan tarts. Mm -hmm. And then what I do with him instead of cutting him a big piece, because I know he'll feel obligated to finish it because he feels obligated to finish my food. If I can't finish it, I'm not kidding. So I just cut him a little tiny slice first. Mm-hmm. Now I'm more experienced, okay? Now if I go to buffet, I take a little bit of everything first. Yeah. Then the trouble is, after I finish everything, I forgot what is the best. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. But I think that's just a that's just a normal thing. We all do that. We all do that. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Actually, this? we've got to go. <laughs> we've got to go to the buffet here. I did go to one. Oh, yeah, you would like it. It was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Now, so anyway, uh, if Chinese people behave abnormal, behave uh, differently, and uh, please understand they are from another country. They have never been out of China. China has been closed all these years. And this is the first time for them to get out of China. Uh, the Chinese culture and the society is totally different from the West. And uh, you also, the Westerners, uh, take it as a experience to experience another culture and uh, try to talk with them, try to teach them and try also to learn from them. Okay, try to, 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 you know, instead of having trouble to hate each other. Do you think that that is, do you think that's something that would be okay to do? Or do you think that um, peop- Chinese people would be offended? Uh, no, no, no. Chinese people, actually, if you smile, they smile. Well, Chinese, I know that. Yeah. They're famous for that. They're yes. very famous for that. Yes. Just <laughs> if you just appear to be very uh, friendly, they are very friendly. They're super friendly. But if you just appear to be a little bit negative they are very much uh, uh, protective mm, defensive protect- defensive. defensive they are very defensive on themselves they are all defensive they okay. talk it so seriously so this is why we say always smile and say hello to the Chinese people and try to have a start a conversation and then try to tell them nicely or, or just show them oh this is the way we do Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think what happens is, um, and I know American tourists are famous for being known as like obese and sloppy and all of these things. But I would say on the whole, uh, in reality, is t- with myself anyway, and other Americans that I've known and that I've worked with, um, we're very like hesitant to just relax and be ourselves until we've been in that place for a little while and kind of felt it out. And, and we feel that we can properly interact respectfully. We won't just go and act like we're in our own country. Our behavior does change. It, it, you know, our behavior is, my behavior anyway, in a foreign environment is much better. 
and more proper mm. at first mm. until I feel okay now I've I've figured it out and how I should act to be respectful yeah. and all so, that so you know you know wait that we say okay welcome and make yourself at home at the same time but this is Sweden uh, this is USA and our home is like this <laughs> well, actually, you wouldn't walk into someone's home, uh, and this is the way I honestly think of it, and the way I, I act when I go to other countries, is I have no problem taking off my shoes in Asia to go into someone's house or even to a business, because that's the, w the way they do it, okay? That's the way they do it. So why would I try to wear my shoes in there and be disrespectful and make the place dirty when that is not their culture? I'm there to visit, I'm there to experience. I'm not there to bring my culture to them. Okay, uh, very good. I think <laughs> everyone should learn from Mercedes. No, and, it's uh, not just me. Uh, someone. It, I think it's Western tourists as a whole. We yeah. have because, and it, it's maybe because of the authoritarianism of our parents when we're young. Mm -hmm. um, most, you know, most from my generation and older. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mom and dad, you don't talk back to them. You do what they say, and children are seen and not heard to a certain extent. You know, it, it's just the way it is. And so when you're around strangers, you behave better. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, President Trump and all the American government, I think you should uh, use Miss Mercedes uh, as an ambassador of a relationship. I'll be uh, the ambassador. <laughs> yes, you know, you know. Uh, someone said, uh, "Mercedes for president." No, I don't. I don't want that. No, Please, that's too much. I, I, I don't want to be a first man. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> in, in, anyway, and well, uh, Trump's wife is foreign. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if someone have a problem with Chinese people, Sonia. if Chinese people get into trouble, the sun is coming. Okay, can you move a little bit more? A little bit. Okay. Okay, if you encounter a problem with the Chinese people, for example, this time, like uh, the Swedish. Sorry, I take it off. Okay. okay, yeah. L like this time, the, 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 the Swedish police, okay? If they call the Chinese embassy first, things will be very different, okay? So? The Chinese people, they know that the Western countries, especially uh, democratic countries, they have human rights, so we can. They feel safe. They say, "Oh, help! It's safe. It's safe." Okay, because they know they have the rights to do that. But they will not do it in China. They will not do it in their own embassy. Why? They wouldn't. No. They really wouldn't do it. No. They know they don't have right in their embassy. So say that the hotel proprietor had been Chinese mm -hmm. descent, just yes. Chinese ethnically, spoke mm -hmm. Swedish, all that good mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Would they have done it? I don't think so. Wow. They, they will be more behave better. Maybe that's why um, we don't hear so many problems here in the United States because, like I said, there are so many Chinese. Chinese and when they dealing come, with Chinese. Yeah, dealing yes. with Chinese. They know how to deal with them. I mean, every city has a Chinatown. Yes. Las Vegas has a Chinatown. We're going there later today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> for example, for example, at uh, this time, the ambassador of Sweden, sorry, the Chinese ambassador in Sweden mm -hmm. has openly said to the police, if you had informed us, we would have helped. Great. Great. Okay. Now, the people all over the world, any country, if you have any problem with Chinese, call the police. The police, first thing, you should call the embassy. Okay. Then the embassy, leave them to deal with them. Mm. Okay, or you can just drive them not to the middle of nowhere, drive them directly to the embassy, to their own country. Yeah. The embassy is China, right? Okay, yeah. drive them to the embassy, hand them to their own people. Say, look, these three people make trouble. They shit on the street. They drunk on the street. They made all the dirty on my restaurant mm. or whatever trouble it is. Mm. Okay, please deal with this. You have to pay for the cleaning. Or whatever. Yeah. Then we we'll just see how busy the Chinese embassy will be. It's going to be, and then the China will educate their own people. Don't do this. Don't make trouble to your embassy. Mm. Okay. The Chinese people are behave very properly. 
under their own leaders. Actually, I think what would happen is probably the word would spread in in uh, China anyway, because the embassy would charge them for everything. So, <laughs> no, uh, there, there's one thing I have to I have to admit: Chinese embassy uh, recent years they improved so much uh, dealing with their own people. I, this I must must admit. And in the 1980s, when I just uh, you know moved out from China, I was a Chinese citizen. By that time, when I went to Australia uh, to the Chinese embassy, you don't have a phone. No one received the phone call. Okay, you go there, no one even say hello to you. And w all I met was somebody's wife. She says, okay, how can I help you? I'm not working here, but I'm the wife of who the who. Then I said, I need a certain paper and this and that. They see my hands are empty. They say, okay, you come another time. I came there again. They see my hand is empty. They say, okay, you come again. Until someone told me, how can you go to the embassy to see the wife with empty hands? I finally got it. I had bought some gifts, some dinner. Then I got what, what I wanted. Yeah. So by that time, the Chinese embassy really treat their own people like shit, nothing. But the recent years, the Chinese embassy do take care of their citizens. Some people say it's a show, it's just a show. Even show, okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter it as doesn't long matter. as they're doing it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be from their heart. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all the emergency, like uh, something happening in, uh, in, in uh, Osaka recently, or some uh, uh, mm. body island, the Chinese mm. always send their troops or send their uh, uh, rescue, sheep, rescue, rescue yeah. team, mm -hmm. or their airplane, whatever. A basis, and uh, they did. They, they do a very good job now. This I'm very, very as a Chinese, uh, ethnic Chinese. I'm very proud of my uh, motherland and my motherland's government for doing that. Yeah. But also, I also urge my motherland, the embassy, and the people government to educate our people. Don't make so so much trouble overseas. Okay. Have some courses and have some studies before you go out. We go out is to learn to experience a foreign life, yeah. to respect others and to, to learn something, to gain something, not to make troubles. Okay. So also the rest of the the rest of the world also try to understand this is a new China, this is something new to them. They come to your country as new your guests, treat them nicely. Mm -hmm. So uh, on both sides will make effort. So the final uh, conclusion is world peace. World peace. And finally, U.S. and China can what sit together. That from world peace. That's from a movie. Sorry. Yeah. And finally, U.S. and China can sit together and make a program. Okay, Xi Jinping and uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> Look at your uh, your sons and daughters. No, 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 no. They, 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 no, Xi Jinping is a brother, and the Trump is your mother, father. No, uncle. No, uncle, 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 uncle Donald he's, Trump. Maybe he's a, he's the weird uncle that everybody kind of avoids <laughs> no, 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 on okay. the holidays. No, no, no. He, he, he he's <laughs> uncle. He's uncle. Okay, he's uncle. He's a, he's a nice uncle, working very hard. By that age, you know, many people get get retired by his age. You know, he's working very hard. We no, respect. honestly, honestly though. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, Obama was young, but I don't believe that someone should really be in that position until they've had quite a bit of experience in life. And, and I'm sorry, but see, uh, people hate me again, but I don't care. But honestly, I don't think that um, most men mature to a point to handle that kind of situation until they're uh, at least you, you're, 50 you're, something you're saying, you're saying or Obama older. was too young. Obama was too young. Um, How about Trump? Trump, it, he's uh, right he's time. a whole different situation. Okay. Um, he's a whole it has. Uh, uh, anyway, in Chinese tradition, I'm just talking about in general. Uh, okay, and okay. Uh, in Chinese tradition and our uh, traditional venue, we respect old people. No, no, no. Maybe Trump hate me. Say he's old people. He's not old. He's Why a young. Why does he care? He, he's, he's president. He, he doesn't care. He's a young. Uh, is aged the young person? He has baby <laughs> hands. He has baby anyway, hands. Anyway, we, we baby hands. I respect uh, our leader and the U.S. leader, and the please work together to make to make the world peace. Thank you for watching, and we will make more videos regarding. Sorry, 
We will make more videos related. You say it, please. More videos related to China U.S. relations. Yes. China U.S. and China and other countries, I suppose. Because you've kind of been all over. So you know the you know how people are perceived how Chinese people are perceived in so many different countries yeah I want I think people try really hard because okay if if people were just going to stereotype you would have issues as well even though you have an Norwegian p passport it's not like you're showing it in no, front of everybody I, I, they see I, you as Chinese. I, I, I plan to to touch you I, I plan to, to put put the words on my, my head I'm no, a Norwegian. do you feel do you feel that you encounter automatic discrimination if you, if you don't tell people that you're Norwegian or they don't, you know, at a hotel, they'll see your Norwegian passport because mm -hmm. you have to register. Mm -hmm. And, of course, at the airport and all of these type of things. But do you think in an interaction at a store or anything like that, that people treat you differently? I, I don't have uh, really much deep experience of that because I, re I think I, I behave properly. I talk gotcha. properly. So, actually, it, it isn't so much of, of an automatic... Um, a discrimination or putting of, uh, of a race down until their behavior mm -hmm. triggers it and yeah. then it's not discrimination yeah it's you're behaving badly get out it wouldn't matter who you are very very true so for example in the Germany this time uh, old hotels booked sometimes you know hotel wait for a long time on many people but I need just a simple question do you have mm -hmm. a room I cannot wait for half hour or over yeah but I don't rush they say hey do you have a room no yeah. I always ask the next person say I have a very quick question just yeah. a couple of seconds it's okay then so oh go ahead you then excuse me that. excuse me do you have a room available for two days something like that right it only takes a second for you to ask a person yes. oh do you mind if I I just have a really quick question. Can I get in front of you? Mm -hmm. it, that only takes you a second, but you have to know to even do that. Yes. Whereas I don't think most, I don't know, but no. I don't think most Chinese know that that's even an option. Mm. And after that, you always say thank you. I mm. appreciate. Oh, I appreciate it very much. Americans, thank you so much. I see an ant on you. But, Amer okay, um, I was watching a comedy sketch. I don't even know what, but um, Canadians always say please. Mm-hmm and sorry mm -hmm. but americans are always always say thank you even if we don't say please because a lot we're taught to say please growing up but i don't know why it just doesn't come out that we don't end up saying it but we always say thank you and we even say thank you for things that you don't say thank you for it's really funny mm -hmm. <laughs> you say don't thank, need to thank, thank, thank me thank you no worries mate there you go no worries mate <laughs> <laughs> that's australian Excellent. yes yes australian. lovely lovely great mate Hi, mate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's oh, the sun is coming over. Okay. Again. Cut now, and uh, <laughs> we'll talk next time. Some other topic. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> you look lovely today. Thank you. Too. Ooh, you have nice legs. <laughs>